And Chad, as you know, I've got a few issues with bobcats. I've been seeing them around. Now, I love seeing bobcats. I think it's cool. But I also, I'm raising livestock, and I know you've got some issues with folks who have farms around Kentucky. Now, what I want to do is take you a walk around the perimeter here and kind of, I don't know if we'll see signs or not, but talk about where good places to set traps are. Sure. And the key to capturing a bobcat, especially one that is targeting uh, your livestock or other interests, uh, is going to be just getting on location for where that animal is present. And so the fact that you've seen them, uh, that's, we'll key in on those spots. Now when the snow was on, there's all kinds of tracks over on that side of that hill. Let's talk about the difference between a cat print versus a canine print. One of the initial kickoffs is going to be, do I have claws present or not? If you see the claws have registered, it's more than likely going to be a canine. Sometimes you'll get uh, you know, a cat where the claws have registered in that print as well, but they're retractable and they're generally not out when they're walking. You've got two lateral toes and then the two inside toe pads. And if you draw an X between each lateral toe and inside toe, bring it down through between where that toe is and then the heel pad, if it hits the heel pad, then you're generally looking at a cat. If you can draw that line, that X, and it makes it be between the heel pad and the toe pads, that generally is going to lead you to uh, the thought that it's a canine uh, track. Squatch versus Yeti. <laughs> Simple. If you don't know that, you don't know. Well, that's you shouldn't true. be out yeah, the woods. Yeah, that's right. that's <laughs> I saw one sitting right here, all, all humped up, you know, his back made it almost perfect. He was just sitting there, chilling. Chicken house right over there, so I, I drove in and got real quiet and snuck in the front door and tried to get my gun. Came out, nothing. I mean, it was dry, no wind, quiet. And usually an animal going through, you know, the area will make all right. kinds of noise. Nothing. I mean, he, he, just like a ghost, he disappeared. That looks like a cat track. Uh -huh. I'm not seeing any claws registering there. I would say that. Looks like a reasonable size tom there too. And just based on the size alone, you know, we can tell that that's probably a bobcat as opposed to a domestic cat. Um, but what we've got here, you can see this is the heel pad, a little harder to see, but it's, it's present here. Uh, we've of course got three cleanly registered toe pads there. I can't really see this one here. We don't see any indentations from claws. Uh, on this heel pad, one of the features we can see here on this forward edge of it is we can see it kind of cleaves in a little bit right there at the top. Uh, rather than just being a, a single curve to that top edge of it, which would be a characteristic of the cats. Uh, and, and to kind of illustrate what I was talking about with the X test earlier, we can see if we draw a line between this lateral toe here and the, the one inside toe, that intersects right through the middle of that heel pad. Uh, again, another indicator that we've got a, a feline track there. Setting on location, always key. So you're going to make a set right here? Yep. Just make this a blind trail set. Uh, so we're not going to use any lure bait or attract them at all. We know the animal is using this trail when it comes through this area. Uh, we've already got a nicely constricted trail right here. We've got this tree and this little tree here to, to keep it right on board. So we're just going to go ahead and blind set this trap right where that foot was. This is a uh, MB650, uh, just one of many uh, steel foothold traps you can purchase. Uh, this is going to be uh, about the largest set you can use on dry land here in Kentucky. Uh, this has got roughly a six inch draw spread when it's set, uh, and then that's thanks to having some inside laminations on there. Um, but uh, yeah, with the bobcat, that's a, a large foot, large paw on that animal, uh, so you want to, uh, to be able to really to get a hold on that. And, and these are truly designed just to hold the animal's foot. Uh, in no way are they in any way uh, doing anything to harm that animal's foot? You know, that's all just misinformation that's been spread over the years. Uh, they are designed to hold them. We do research with these same traps to hold that animal, put a collar on it, and turn it back out. To set a trap line here in Kentucky, you do have to have a trapping license. Uh, once you've got that, uh, to set your traps out, of course, you have to have landowner permission to, to be out there. Um, you do need to have your traps tagged. But if you can see that, I've got a copper tag wrapped around this box swivel here. I do it that way. You can attach them anyway to your trap. This just really keeps it there so I don't have to worry about it. On that tag, you need to have your, uh, your name and address indicated on there uh, or something new the department's gone to just in the last few years is a trapper ID number, which is a number uh, that the department has a database. It's unique to you. Uh, you can just put that ID number on your tag as well as the 1-800-25-ALERT uh, number. So that way you've got some anonymity on the trap line. Uh, you know, people who may find your traps 
Uh, they don't need to be coming straight to you if, if they have an issue, and uh, they shouldn't have an issue if you've got permission anyway. Let's go set one. Okay. You know, I have become so much more of a, of a woodsman. I've never considered myself an experienced woodsman by any means. Uh, but by, when I got into trapping, you just learn so much more about the habits of these animals in the woods that, you know, that we're working with. And it's just, I mean, it makes you a better deer hunter, a better turkey hunter, everything, just because you're, your sense of observation, just you start keying in on everything mm -hmm. and understanding where those animals go. All right, Chad, you know, the one arm guy's way over here. Yeah. I want to keep my digits, you know. <laughs> but uh, have you ever set one off on your hand? Absolutely. It's going to happen. And again, it's, it's worth doing just to show that these traps are designed to hold that animal. I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you, and I... There's no, there's no pain involved. It's, it's more that shock factor. So of, it's oh, the, when you pull me. against it, it just, it, it holds it. It's holding it. They, they are designed to hold that animal <laughs> until you arrive the next morning. I can't believe you just did that. So, yep. All right. I think it's always good to show people that yeah. not cutting legs off. What we want now is to basically make this location look like it did when we started. This rock was down in the trap bed. We'll use it as kind of a step guide. Put it there in the trail. Most of fur bears aren't going to want to step on that, so they'll step over it, which will put their foot right there on the pan, hopefully. Just sort of cover this back up. You don't want to get anything on there that might clog those jaws up too much and, and stop them from coming up all the way around the paw. Just one nice place to step. There you go. Finish set. I like it. Generally, this is where they're going to funnel to and follow this trail. So I've got them down to a you know, five foot wide swath here. I think I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of the cedar and this little bit of a bank right here. And I'm just going to dig a big dirt hole set. That's what we're going to do in this instance. So it's going to be all about eye appeal. Something's torn it up. We're going to have dirt everywhere. And uh, that's what we're going to go with here. We want it to just look torn up. So anything coming down through there, we're coming up this way. It's going to see this and just wonder what the heck did that. Which is essentially just taking advantage of the natural curiosity of your your upland predators to just check out any natural hole because that's where you know your prey species are going to be denning generally. And so what I'm trying to do is get this dirt hole as deep as I can get it so that my attractant is further down that hole than get. And that's going to keep a lot of foot traffic up here in front of the hole, which is where we'll have the trap bedded. But these dirt holes, they're just kind of universally attractive to fur bears. Just again, I think it's just an indication that prey may be there. I don't want them to be able to see it either because they may see it and say, eh, I don't want that. So I'm going to go down and then I'm even going to try and take it off to the side, which is also going to be more natural. Uh, like what, you know, something may be doing a groundhog or whatever we're mimicking here. And uh, kind of, again, force them more foot movement, keep them here working the set longer, increasing my chances of getting a catch. Yeah, we're going to key in on the senses of sight and smell and taste if they can get to it. Uh, just keying in on what they want and bring them to this hole and put them over my trap. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and bed this trap here in front of our hole. I'll just kind of really block it in heavy, tell them where I want their foot to be. And cats are just, I guess they're more okay with this. They just, they don't shy away from it the way a coyote would. The coyote is just much more an animal that kind of just lives on edge all the time and they're survivors because of it. So we'll just take some beaver meat here. So we'll tuck that back down in there, pushing it as far down as I can get it. And that alone will catch critters, but we'll go ahead and add a few other scents too, just to make it even a little more attractive. Let me get a whiff of that. Sure, right absolutely. With cats, I guess the, the whole thing, everything I've read is the gaudier the better, you know? And so we'll kind of just hang this out here over the set and uh, let the wind kind of catch it. Again, that, that eye appeal of that feather swinging around everything. and. and so we're going to do kind of a, a urine post set, which is kind of a, a territorial marker, you know. In this case, we don't have a natural post, but this long running fence edge is going to be just a natural travel way uh, for the animal. So we're just going to take, I've got this little piece of a charred log here, and we're going to bury it in right here. It's got eye appeal with that black, you know, it kind of stands out from the grass. Uh, so it'll catch eye a little bit, but then we'll also, we'll put some gland lure and some urine on there. And we're putting it into this backing here, which will stop any animals from working it from the backside. And we'll have the trap bedded out here. So hopefully when they come by to check this out, we'll have it. And I'm gonna come back, oh, 
since we want this to be able to catch cats or coyotes and stuff, I'm going to stick maybe closer to about oh, nine inches or so away from that attractant and a couple inches offset there. So far you have three different ways to uh, catch. One mm -hmm. of them is just a natural travel route. Yep. Another one is food and this one is scent as far as being mm -hmm. territorial. Yep. So using every trick in the book here. Absolutely. And you want to think about that throughout the year. Kind of wanting to put in a variety today just to, to kind of have all those things covered. But right now, being into February in the latter half of our trapping season, this is when your coyotes and your cats, uh, this is their breeding season. This is when they're starting to pair up, establish territories. So getting food in their belly, yes, they still have to do it, but it's not, their, not the number one thing on their mind this time of year. So some of these more uh, territorial, sexual type attractants for them uh, can be the ticket this time of year. Whereas in the fall, sets that we're catching on food may have stopped producing for you by now. Keep it looking natural, stuff from the area, but I'll take that put it right here, kind of plant it there, just to discourage them from stepping, the, just these just real subtle guides to say, hey, this is, this is the good spot to step right there. Now what we'll do in this instance is again, since our main focus is gonna be cats, we will use a, a, a cat gland lure uh, and cat urine, but that's still gonna be universally attractive to your fox and your coyotes and, uh, and raccoon and, and other fur bears as well. All right, now, you know, I've got, uh chickens everything in the world wants to eat my chickens so you've got a couple a couple things which are going to sit around for raccoons too which i got plenty of those yeah absolutely uh raccoons in most areas of kentucky are probably one of your more common fur bears those and possums and uh so sometimes you you know you'll make your sets intended for a fox or coyote or cat and you'll catch a raccoon first and that's fine uh they're still a target species that we want but sometimes it's nice to also clean some of them out with other kinds of sets that are easy to put in not as time consumptive so that your sets that you're making specific for your cats and coyotes and fox uh, are still available to catch those animals. So these particular traps, uh, these are called dog-proof coon traps. There's a few different brand names you can get of them, uh, but essentially just a, a steel cylinder with a post that you shove in the ground. This trigger, they reach down in there, they pull a steel thing, very target specific for raccoons because they can get their paw in there. They've got kind of a, a, a hand where they can actually grab stuff, unlike your canines and cats and that triggers and it just holds their foot. So it's another foothold style trap, holds their foot in that cylinder and then they're there waiting for you. Uh, in this case, we know their trail is gonna be right around the perimeter of this chicken house uh, as they're looking for some way to, to get in there. So we'll just go ahead and set this trap just right here off the corner. Try to keep it away a little bit you know, from the fence so that once they're caught, they're not grabbing and yanking and pulling mm -hmm. you know, on the fence in here. So we'll just kind of put it right back here just to keep some distance. Kind of set. What kind of set are we doing? It's a different here? kind of set. What we're going to do here is a flat set. And a and flat set can be any number of things. Uh, the urine post set we did earlier is a type of flat set in a sense as well. But it's just basically a set where you're not digging anything into the ground like a dirt hole set. So it's just going to be on the surface. We're going to go ahead and use a beaver tail in this case. Uh, caught, you know, by another trapper friend of mine. Just another way instead of tossing this out you know, in the trash, or, or you can toss it back out where, you know, other scavengers will eat it, but we're going to go ahead and use it to, to put up some more fur. Uh, good hunk of fat and meat, everything, all your predators love the taste of beaver, uh, so this would be a good attractant. We don't have exposed bait laws here in Kentucky, uh, and that's because thankfully we haven't found it, we haven't seen a need for them, uh, you know, but any kind of exposed bait is going to draw in, you know, not only your four-legged predators, but your hawks and owls too, your raptors. Uh, and they're of course protected. We don't want them in our traps. Um, you know, let's protect those and, and cover this up. So it's just gonna be available for passing by fur bears. So we're gonna stake it down, which is gonna ensure that they're stuck here trying to get this and hopefully put them in our trap. Set like this, it almost doesn't matter. Anywhere in here, hopefully that animal's gonna be working trying to get that beaver tail and that meat out of here. So we can set the trap anywhere through here and hopefully the foot movement, we're gonna get it. Well, any predator your catch, is uh, it makes me happy because yeah. like I say, I got a little small farm where I like to keep some critters and uh -huh. all the critters out here seem to want my critters. Yep. <laughs> all right, you've shown us several different types of traps. We've been out here several hours. I had to go change clothes out here. <laughs> put a sweater on, I got cold out here. But you're gonna go set some more traps yeah. and we're gonna see what happens. Any predator you catch, I'm very happy with because like I say, I got a lot of, I'm gonna have to do a lot of farming with a lot of small animals this spring and, and uh, I guess we check these from day to day. And you said something kind of amazing. Uh, not necessarily it's the first day, second, third, fourth. Yeah, not always. It, it really depends on when that critter 
you know, when that fur bear encounters your set, you know, they're, they're not necessarily moving to the same areas every night. You know, some of them are, some of them aren't. You know, uh, coyotes especially may range across, you know, thousands of acres. Mm -hmm. You know, so it may be every third or fourth day that they may even encounter your set. And then it has to be if, if they choose to, to even work it that night. They may or may not. It just kind of, again, depends on the fur bear. So, so yeah, you know, day one, don't necessarily expect to have all your traps full. When you're setting your sets, do expect that that set's going to catch. Don't set it unless you think it's going to catch. Now, but take your time. You check them in the morning. You check them in the afternoon. What's what's your preference on that? You have to check them every 24 hours, uh, once every 24 hour period. Um, the way I personally run my lines, I have to check them in the morning just to do it before I come to work. But uh, I, I don't think it matters too much. Uh, I think it matters the property you're on. Sometimes it's better to remove that animal from the trap, you know, uh, before daylight comes. Uh, they stay comfortable at night, and so get them on out of there. Get your set working again. I'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely. Keep my fingers crossed. That's right. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hey, buddy. Yeah, nobody likes this, but you know what? It's necessary. What, you just 22? Yeah, I mean, these are subsonics. Uh, just to try to generally they don't pass through, so I only have. So there really is no blood. Day two, you like day three? I like day three, but I'll take them any day. Well, you know what? This is a female. Now nobody likes to take an animal like this. They're they're amazing creatures. They're very smart. Um, and you very humanely put this thing down. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds, it was over. Yeah. Um, but this is an animal that has been taking my livestock. I've okay. got chickens, I'm, I'm gonna have some, some lambs, some things like that around here. And these really, they take a toll on, on the small farm and the big farm. Absolutely. But now obviously, if, if you take one, you'd like to use the hide. Fur trappers, you know, we really are, are a, a group that's participating in the global economy. Uh, you know, these hides on fur bears, uh, you know, are used for making garments, uh, tying flies, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of uses we have. But at the same time, uh, this animal uh, was causing you damage uh, with your livestock. And so uh, by removing it from the local population here, you know, we're helping protect those interests. You know, we don't hesitate to kill mice in our kitchen, you know, or flies. And, and that's the way I can personally look at it, is just that, again, I, we're killing it for a purpose. It's not just wanton waste by any means. It's fur instead of food. Uh, in some cases, we eat it. Uh, but uh, life is a life and we have to manage our, our interests, you know, and it's participation in, in a heritage of this country. You know. as, as humane as this can be, it is. Absolutely. And uh, we have taken care of one problem. Now last night it sounded like there were 10,000 across the creek over there okay. still wailing. So yeah. if we could leave them out a few more day, days, I'd like to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. We still haven't got our cats yet. That's right, we've got to get those cats. All right, Chad. There's no reason for that guy to be down there. Sure is not. He came for for one reason alone. Mm -hmm. And my rooster's not happy. And this guy had ill intent. Sure did. I've walked up on him asleep in these traps. Yeah. They really. I mean, it's just another fine example that it's not a all night struggle. <laughs> well, there's one less issue I'll have. Now I have a real problem with predators and we're gonna leave traps out for a couple of weeks. You know, we never got a bobcat, but we did get a couple of coyotes and we also got raccoons and possums, which will create havoc and they will kill your chickens. Now this was just a small part of our interview with Chad and you can go on YouTube page where you can see the different traps he set, including different baits and lures, including this one. To look at that on YouTube, go to youtube.com forward slash KY afield.